Have you ever wanted to make your very own mobile game but didn't want to go through the hassle of learning how to code? Well, my name is Henry Fransu, and today I'm going to show you exactly how you can make your own Choose Your Adventure mobile game using no code with the help of BuildBox AI. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now we're going to start off by downloading the actual game engine itself. So if you head over to BuildBox.com, you should be greeted with a screen like this. Once you're here, you're going to want to head over to the Downloads tab here and click on BuildBox Classic as that's the software we're going to be using today. Once you click the button, it should automatically download your setup file here, but if it doesn't, you can just scroll down on the page and choose Mac or Windows. Now, if you're on Mac OS like I am, you're going to be greeted with a screen like this once you open up your setup file. It's going to look a little bit different on Windows, but it's very straightforward either way. If you're on Mac like I am, you're going to drag the icon over to the Applications folder here, and you should be all good to go after that. You can confirm by going over to your Applications folder, and you should see BuildBox Classic sitting right there. Now, if you open up the application, you should be greeted by the home screen that looks just like this, and now we should be all good to go. Now, when we open the game engine here, you're going to see on our home screen that we have an AI assistant here, and this assistant is actually going to help us make our entire choose your own adventure game for us. Now, for the AI to actually begin making our entire game for us, we're going to need to provide it with a story idea. And I had the idea of asking ChatGPT for some game ideas, because then the entire game is actually going to be made by AI. Now I've loaded up a new prompt here in ChatGPT and I'm asking it to create me some game ideas and I've described BuildBox AI here so it knows what it's dealing with. Now I've sent off my message here to ChatGPT and let's see some of the results it gives me. So I'm seeing we got some, ooh, let's see. Whoa, we got a detective kind of game here. Space exploration, survival, time travel. Ooh, I kind of like time travel actually. So I think I'm gonna go with this time travel one here. Now, I've told ChatGPT that this is the game idea I want to go forward with. So now it's made me this prompt that I can actually put into BuildBox AI. It says, create a thrilling choose-your-own-adventure game where you can use a time machine to travel through moments in history, and you can alter timelines to shape their own destiny. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paste this into BuildBox AI here, and it immediately knows exactly what I'm talking about. So now it's going to ask me what my main character wants to look like. Now, when describing your main character, you can actually get creative as you want. I'm going to keep mine pretty simple and just say it's going to be a boy with brown hair. Now, after we submit our information about our main character, the AI assistant here is going to ask us if we want any enemies or obstacles. So I'm going to go over to ChatGPT here again and ask if it has any suggestions. Now, it's given me quite a few options here, but I think the one that's reaching out to me the most is catastrophic events such as natural disasters and stuff like that. Now, yet again, I'm going to copy our prompt here and paste it into BuildBox AI so it can register all of our information. And once I've done that, it's going to ask me yet again if I want to add another enemy or obstacle. You can add a bunch into the game, so I'm actually going to add in one more from our list here. And from looking at our list, I think technological malfunctions might be a really good obstacle for the character to avoid. It's going to be issues with the time machine itself, such as breakdowns and malfunctions. The AI is going to ask me yet again if I want to add more enemies or obstacles, and I'm going to keep it with those two for now just so I don't drag on this video for way too long, so I'm just going to reply with no here, and we should be good to go. And now for some of the final touches to the game, the AI here is asking what type of background music we want for the game, which is kind of cool. So I'm just going to go straight forward with the theme here, and I'm going to say adventure theme music, because I think that's going to fit our game the most. And now we're going to reply yes to the AI to confirm that all of our answers are correct, and as you can see here, it's going to get to work for us. Now, a cool feature is that as the AI is creating all the artwork for our games, you can actually hover over top of our individual chapters on the side here, and you can see the work as it's being created. Now, based off of my personal experience, the AI takes around 30 seconds to throw together your entire game file. And even more interesting, if you hover over top of our individual chapters now, you can see live as the AI adds text to the game, adding our options for our choose your own adventure game. And just like that, your entire game file was made in about 30 seconds. And the game engine is going to automatically throw you into this screen here. This is your menu screen inside of your UI editor. And if you want to exit out of your menu screen here and look at all your other UI screens, you can just go to your mind map up here, zoom in on whichever screen you want to edit, and just click on it. So simply here, I'm going to click on my um, victory screen. So this one is going to display when a person wins the game. Now, much like our first screen that we looked at, this is also inside of our UI editor here. Now, this is our game over screen. Like I said, this is going to be shown um, when a person wins our game. So you can go in here and click on all the different elements that you might want to edit. So our AI already went ahead and generated all the menu buttons and such for us. But let's say, for example, you want to not use these buttons and add in your own. So you can go on, on the right here. Just click the X and it will remove that button for you. And then you can go in and add in your own that you might have designed yourself. I'm going to personally keep mine in for now. Now, I won't get into the editing aspect way too much here because that's what the second module of this tutorial is kind of reserved for. 
So without further ado, let's get into our actual game here and see what the AI created for us. So we're just going to press a play button up here to start the simulation of our game here. And boom, there we go. All right, so this is our main menu here. Uh, it appears the AI named our game Chrono Quest. It's kind of a cool name. Uh, embark on a time traveling adventure, alter history and shape your own destiny. Kind of cool. Okay, so we're going to press the start button here to get right into our game. Okay, find yourself in a bustling medieval marketplace surrounded by merchants selling their wares. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Our two options here are explore the marketplace, look for interesting items, or help a merchant who is being robbed. Ooh, should probably help someone if they're being robbed. Successfully stop the robbery and earn some gratitude and coins. So if you look in the top right here, um, as we do good things inside of the game, it's actually going to credit us coins, which... Um, I'll show you in part two how you can add it in and stuff, but uh, with your coins, you can actually redeem stuff in a virtual shop. Like, you can get uh, stuff inside of your game. Um, anyways, let's press continue here. Standing on the deck of a pirate ship. Whoa. Uh, with the wind inside of your hair and you smell the, the smell of the, of the sea in the air. Okay. it's kind of cool. Um... I want to try to negotiate with the pirates for a safe passage or join the pirate crew and search for hidden, hidden treasure. Um, hidden treasure kind of sounds cool, guys. I think we're going to go for that. Work on a treasure hunt and find a chest full of coins. There, perfect. Uh, you can see from when we pre previously got coins, we started off with five coins. We're now at 12, so that actually helped us out quite a bit. Um, you can press continue here. And we continue through time. We're in a laboratory filled with bubbling test tubes and sparking machinery. As you work on your time machine invention. Oh, cool. Uh, perform a risky experiment. Speed up the time machine development. Take a break and explore the lab. Continue working on your time machine. Oh. Uh, honestly, let's do the risky experiment. A bit risky. Let's go for that. Experiment goes wrong. Oh, no. Causes a malfunction, loss in coins. Oh, that's not good. All right, so we lost coins there because we did something <laughs> kind of stupid. Okay, so let's press continue here as we go through time more. Whoa. So you know, a futuristic cityscape with flying cars zooming past and holographic billboards lighting up. Whoa, okay. Um, avoid the busy city and search for a quiet spot to relax. Explore the city and interact with futuristic technology. Ooh. Um... Let's go with the technology this time. Have fun exploring the city and earn some coins. Oh, cool. Okay, continue here again. Appears we're in a wild west town now with cowboys and outlaws causing a ruckus all around me. Okay. Want to stay out of the conflict or do we want to join the cowboys in a showdown against the outlaws? Um, you know, we lost coins the last time, so actually, we're going to try to stay out of the conflict this time, see what happens. There we go. Avoid the crossfire and get a few coins. Get rewarded for being smart. There we go. <laughs> and there you go. That's a bit of a preview of what the AI is capable of creating. And it makes all these cool visuals for you. And um, yeah, it makes you an entire story game, which is really cool. And while it does need a bit of editing, which I'll get into in part two, I should mention one thing that I've didn't add in that I would recommend you guys add into your own games is um, the hit points. If you recall, when uh, I was talking with the Buildbox AI earlier, it asked me if I wanted to add in hit points to the game, which basically means it adds in your own health bar type thing here. It would add it on the screen, and uh, you would actually have health throughout the game. Um, I didn't think this game would be a good fit for it, but I mean, obviously the AI proved me wrong. So um, yeah, definitely add that in. It adds a uh, another level of excitement into your game i guess to have your character have a health bar so you can you know actually lose in a way i guess and that concludes the first module to this tutorial you should now be set up with buildbox ai you should have your game idea and you should be a bit familiar with our editor and in module two i'm going to show you how to make any edits you want to make i'm going to run through my own game that i'm making and i'm going to show you guys how to export your game to buildbox world you can access module two through the top right corner here or in the link down below i'll see you guys in the next one